My name is Pam Ferrer. I'm the Macmillan Prostate Cancer Clinical Nurse Specialist. I deal with patients who have stable prostate cancer. The definition of erectile dysfunction is the inability to achieve or maintain an erection for sufficient for sexual activity. There are different ways of assessing whether or not you have problems with your erectile function. And this slide shows you the British Association of Urological Nurses score for sexual function. The first section is on how you rate your confidence about being able to keep an erection. The second one is asking you when you've had an erection, was it hard enough for penetration? The second one is asking how often you are able to maintain your erection after you have penetrated. The fourth one is asking about whether or not it is difficult to maintain your erection until completion. And the fifth question asks you whether you attempted sexual intercourse, how often it was satisfactory for you. There are various other scores that can be looked at as to how you have problems with your sexual function. As a patient with prostate cancer, the question is, what does this mean for me? Patients who have problems with their erection say that they can feel that they are letting their partner down. Some patients feel that they avoid the situation because they don't want to be disappointed themselves or they don't want to disappoint their partner. A lot of gentlemen feel that it is a matter of ego. They feel less masculine because they no longer have a good erectile function. Some patients say that their partner believes it's their fault when they're not able to achieve intercourse, and there is a feeling of a lack of closeness. Generally, it is affecting the quality of life, and patients will become very tearful about the situation. As a result of erectile dysfunction, it can cause big problems within the relationships. Problems with sexual intercourse are frequently cited as reasons for failed relationships. 21% of people report that there has been a previous relationship breakdown due to the erectile dysfunction, and 9% of people noted that the relationship was in difficulty as a result of this. So what causes erectile dysfunction? Many patients with prostate cancer will have erectile dysfunction, but it's something that not everybody will talk about. Things with prostate cancer that we know will cause problems are chemotherapy will cause you problems in the short term. Radiotherapy to the pelvic area may cause you problems as it is affecting the blood vessels and the nerve endings. Pelvic surgery, such as a robotic radical prostatectomy or a transurethral resection of prostate will cause you problems. Medication that you are on, such as tablets for your blood pressure, bisoprolol, tablets that uh, are used to treat depression, such as paroxetine and fluoxetine can cause problems. Other medical conditions, such as diabetes, Parkinson's disease, spina bifida and multiple sclerosis, are all also reasons why you may have problems with sexual function. So what can we do to help? One of the easiest things that you can look at to help with this is doing pelvic floor exercises. You have heard of the term use it or lose it. Information about pelvic floor exercises can be found through Prostate Cancer UK and online you will find that there is a lot of information on pelvic floor exercises. There is a physiotherapist who has done quite a lot of research and you can look into this. Sometimes you need to have some counselling to get things out into the open in the first instance and Relate is a good place to go to to look for this or even speaking just to your GP. Make sure that both you and your partner are on the same page and that you're both happy to get things working again. First line treatments. If you've had treatment for your prostate cancer, you are entitled to have treatment for your erectile function on the NHS under the terms of Schedule 2. The current guidance from NICE is that the first thing that we should consider is a vacuum tumescence device. There are vacuum pumps that you can buy online, which are probably not the best ones for you, and it is better to have an appointment at the hospital with a representative of the company so that you get the size and the style of pump that you need. 
if you are having a prostatectomy, it will be requested for you prior to having your surgery. Vacuum pumps are easy to use. It is about technique. So learning how to use your pump would be beneficial. In the first instance, use this for a short period of time to get used to the sensation. Then you can use a pump whenever and wherever you wish to. But in order to maintain the erection, you will need to use a constriction ring as well as a vacuum pump. You cannot leave the constriction ring on for more than 30 minutes. Just to show you some of the different sorts of vacuum tumescence devices, you will find that on the internet you can buy all sorts. This is one mechanism that is used, which is a one-handed pump. The pump goes over the penis and as you pump, a will be drawn up inside it. At the bottom of the pump is a constriction ring. When you release it, the ring stays on the base of the penis for no longer than 30 minutes and then you can remove it. The pump that we would normally use is a two-piece pump. You have the pump and the cylinder. Cylinders come in different sizes and then you have a device that fits into the bottom to get a good seal round you. Again, once this is in use, it goes over the penis and you pump. So the vacuum that you are getting, which I will show you in a moment, is a very good amount. Initially, you use it for no more than 10 minutes to get used to the sensation because the seal is very good. Once the penis is erect, you press the release button, having dropped your constriction ring onto the base of the penis. Constriction rings normally are in different sizes depending on what you're using and different materials so that you have some stretch. These are old ones, so don't stretch as well, but we give you one that is a size that you need and these are available on the NHS. The second sort of treatment that you would be offered are tablets. Not everyone is able to have tablets, so if you suffer from angina and have a spray or have badly controlled blood pressure, these would not be prescribed for you. The most common tablet that people have heard of is Viagra, otherwise known now as Sildenafil. The tablets were introduced into the country in 1998 and were designed to treat people with heart disease. The fact that they gave patients good erections was an incidental find. Sildenafil is a first choice of tablet that would be prescribed by Northamptonshire CC. G. There are three doses, 25 milligrams, 50 milligrams and 100 milligrams, but you would only have a prescription for four tablets, possibly a month, unless your GP will prescribe more for you. There are a couple of other tablets out there, Vardenafil, whose other name is Levitra, and Tadalafil, the other name for which is Cialis. Both of these are not currently the first choice but if your GP is able to, they may prescribe them for you, as we know that Cialis also will work for patients who have urinary symptoms. The second line of treatment is using an injection. The drug that we use here is a drug called alprostadil, and alprostadil has been used for some time to stimulate erections when we're looking at penile curvature. The injection doses go from five milligrams up to 40 milligrams in total. You need to be taught how to do the injection, as again, it is about technique, and the injection actually goes into the penis itself. These are taught in clinic. The other thing that we use are a pellet, which is known as Muse. Again, the drug is alprostadil. These are given by passing urine, leaving the penile tip moist and the pellet is then inserted into the water pipe via a little applicator and the applicator drops the pellet down. You then massage the penis towards the body and this will allow the drug to be released and will hopefully give you an erection. A newer line of treatment is a cream called Vitaris. This is popped onto the head of the penis and massaged in and again may give you a good erection. Alprostadil does have one drawback in that there is a risk of priapism. This is a prolonged rigid erection that will last you more than four hours and will need 
medical intervention to relieve the situation. It only occurs when people overdose the amount of drugs that they inject. So injections are given into the corpora cavernosa, which is a tube on the top of the penis, and you have a kit with a syringe filled with liquid, a bottle filled with powder, and two needles. A large needle for drawing up your injection, and a small needle for giving the injection. Once your injection is mixed, your injection is in a small amount like this. On the side of your syringe, you have the graduation so you can get the dose that you require and you inject into the side of the penis. Once it's in, you press the plunger and then release it and press on the skin for a moment or two and within 20 minutes you should get a good rigid erection. The way of giving the other drug is with something called Muse. Muse comes in a little box with a packet inside it. Inside the packet is your applicator which is a small plastic tube. Once you take the cover off, inside here you have a little tiny pellet just in the end of the applicator. Having been to the toilet, you don't dab all the drips off the end. If you squeeze the penis, this will open the head of the penis and then the applicator is dropped inside. You press the plunger, which will allow the pellet to drop into the penis and then you massage down towards the body. And within about 20 minutes, you should get a good rigid erection. It's something again that we would normally start you off with in clinic to get the dosage right for you as there are three doses, 250 milligrams, 500 milligrams and 1000 milligrams. The only other way of giving the same drug, which is a newer method, is with Vitaros. Vitaros is a cream, it is a topical alprostadil and you pop it onto the top of the penis and just into the head and once you've put this on and again massage around the penis that will give you your good rigid erection hopefully within 15-20 minutes. Internal devices are, uh, or implants are something that we would use really as a last resort after all other avenues of treatment have been tried. These are put in in specialist centres. The internal workings of the penis are cored out and the tubes are inserted. One is a semi-malleable me mechanism, which means that you would have a permanent erection, but these can be folded away so that you're able to maintain a normal appearance walking about. The more technical device has two reservoirs, one of which is inserted into the scrotum, the other which is inserted under the abdominal wall. When you pump one of the reservoirs, the fluid will fill the penile device and give you the erection. Once the erection is no longer required, you press the other and the fluid will return to the other reservoir. They work very effectively, but once it's been put in, there is no going back. Publications that may be useful to you about sexual activity are Sex and Prostate Cancer, which is available through prostatecancerUK.org, Prostate Cancer Tests and Treatments, which is a guide for gay and bisexual men, again available through prostatecancerUK.org, Sex Life and Prostate Cancer, which is available at macmillan.org.uk, and Managing the Late Effects of Pelvic Radiotherapy in Men, which is also available through macmillan.org.uk. Useful telephone numbers are the Macmillan Prostate Cancer Clinical Nurse Specialists, at Northampton General Hospital or Kettering General Hospital. These are available Monday to Friday from 8 till 4 and the telephone numbers are on the screen in front of you now. ProstateCancerUK.org is another useful place to contact as is Prostate Helpline with a website for all of these. The Northampton Prostate Cancer Support Group is also available if you have any wishes to speak to anybody who is in a similar position to yourself. Thank you for watching. Further information support is also available by telephone and online through the Cancer Information Centre at Northampton General Hospital 
or Kettering General Hospital. The Macmillan Cancer Support is available from 8am to 8pm, seven days a week, if you wish to ring them.